Hi, I'm Peter Sullivan, and this is going to be a dad-to-dad -dad conversation about wireless safety. You know, about 10 years ago, I was working in a uh, facility uh, here in Silicon Valley, um, right outside an Air Force base, and there was a big exposure. Uh, it was basically a satellite tra tracking facility, and one of the other engineers posted a comment and said, hey, I'm really worried about the wireless radiation exposure. And I just saw that email and I was really dismissive and just deleted it. And I thought, how ridiculous to even be concerned about something like that. Um, it turned out that was quite a mistake. Uh, my kids were having developmental delays at the time. Um, that was not our only exposure, but basically I was having some sleep problems. Our kids were having some developmental delays. And it took me years to figure out that wireless radiation, especially constant exposures, were a key part of that. So uh, if I could talk to myself back in time right now, I would say, please don't dismiss wireless radiation or don't assume that it's been proven to be perfectly safe because it hasn't been. Now, many people have heard that non-ionizing radiation, which is wireless radiation or microwave radiation, is not strong enough to cause harm. It's basically not strong enough to break up a chemical bond and that would, of course, be harmful. Now, that's one thing that can't go wrong, and that's a true statement, but it's not a complete proof of safety. Now, there's enormous amount of evidence, thousands of studies showing harm at many levels. We have oxidation from wireless radiation or wire radio frequency radiation. We have inflammation. We have sperm damage, including DNA damage. We have perfusion of the blood-brain barrier, compromise of the blood-brain barrier. I'm most actually concerned about the calcium channels. There are calcium channels in our body, in our nervous systems, in our heart, where they're most dense, are sensitive to voltage. So they're voltage gated. They open and close based on voltage. And it's the signals, the wireless signals that we're sending into the body are compromising that gating mechanism, allowing too much calcium into the body, into the cells, creating inflammation. So this is what harm looks like. This is what overexposure to wireless looks like. So number one, we talked about inflammation. So a lot of the conditions that we're dealing with now are inflammatory, and this is wireless is a factor in increasing inflammatory response. We've also got immediate clumping of blood, right? And so the symptom with that is you'll get headache or fatigue. Uh, the most common symptom reported with too much wireless exposure is a sleep disturbance and insomnia. Um, anxiety and depression are also reported. Uh, ear ringing, so tinnitus, but actually this is now not hearing nothing but actually hearing wireless signals. Um, sperm damage is uh, quite concerning. So we not only have reduction in mobility, but we have DNA damage. And in autism, we know that de novo mutations or non-inherited mutations are part of the autism epidemic. And that's a great concern, something that can't be reversed. Um, so we talked about a lot of these, a lot of these conditions like autism and ADHD are now being examined in context of wireless radiation and, and, some, and all of, a lot of these symptoms all line up. So there are papers on this on how all the symptoms of autism match the symptoms of wireless exposure and EMF. Um, and now we also know that the underlying mechanisms really are fully explained, especially if you look at the calcium channels. So this can explain a lot of these developmental delays, speech delays, uh, autism, ADHD, and a lot of the growth in chronic conditions that's happened over the last couple of years. So women and children are more sensitive to this. Basically, their smaller body sizes make it harder for them to handle radiation. You have less area to dissipate the radiation uh, and the, the temperature differences that go with that. Um, but not just the size is not the only issue. Children are not just small adults. Uh, children are developing their neural connections. And calcium signaling is fundamental to creating those connections. So if that signaling is interfered with, as we know it is, uh, it's going to be harder to make those clear connections and create a, a fully functional, developed brain. Um, now men, just because you're larger, doesn't mean you're immune to this stuff. Obviously, we're being harmed as well. Um, the eyeballs and the testicles are particularly sensitive to microwaves, and we're very concerned about sperm damage. Uh, especially, again, as we talked about DNA damage and uninherited mutations going forward that we know are a factor in autism. The threats in our modern world are really invisible at this point. Things have really changed, but our instincts as fathers to protect is still there. Here's what we can do. We can start protecting our wives and the reproductive organs from laptops and cell phones and constant exposure. 
and our own reproductive organs. Cell phones in the front pocket uh, are going to harm sperm and keeping the laptops off the lap. And then going forward, looking at night to turn off constant sources of wireless exposure, turning off your cordless phone base station, your Wi-Fi baby monitor at night to reduce constant wireless exposure. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video.